بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continue on in our discussion of fasting which is relevant for us since the holy month of Ramadan is steadily approaching so it's good to always spend our time before the holy month of Ramadan in preparation for Ramadan and one of the ways in which we can prepare for the holy month of Ramadan is by fasting the month of Sha'ban, which is now, fasting as much as we can, in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in order as a way of training ourselves in preparation. Going back to some of the fawaid or some of the benefits of fasting the holy, holy month of Ramadan, some of the things we mention is that it uh, combines the various ways of being patient that a person is patient with the commands of Allah patient with protecting his or herself from sin you know from indulging in the Muharram and it trains us to also be patient with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an about the reward for those who are patient. And so this directly applies with fasting because fasting is a way of restraining ourselves and preparing ourselves with patience. And for many of us, it, it becomes difficult at times to refrain from the muharramat. Some people are tested with drug use. Some people are tested with their desires, with zina. Some people are tested with uh, even other more extreme forms of following their desires. Some people are tested with homosexuality or lesbianism or and all the other various ways in people in which people are tested. And this, when I am referring to people here, I mean Muslims. Muslims are tested with this. We have all kind of difficulties within our community. So that requires patience in order to remove one from that. And patience by ex We exercise patience by restraining ourselves from those behaviors which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we exercise patience by enacting those commandments of Allah or practicing those things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, the sabirun, those people who are patient, will have prepared for them their reward without any uh, accounting, meaning that they will have a great, great reward, a, a reward that is, uh, you, you will not be able to, you cannot account for, or it is such a great, immense reward that you cannot count those blessings and reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those people who are patient. We also mentioned that fasting, it is a type of shafa'ah for the person who fasts on the Day of Judgment. The Qur'an and fasting both will intercede on behalf of the person who fasts and the person who reads the Qur'an in the depths of the night, reciting the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may, may Allah bless us to be of them. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Also we mentioned that fasting is one of those deeds which a person will be forgiven 
and we mention the verse in Surah Al Ahzab where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about uh, those people amongst the righteous, the believing men, the believing women, the fasting men, the fasting women, the men and women who give in charity, and those who protect their private parts from things like adultery, fornication, masturbation, uh, in, in other forms of impermissible actions per, uh, related to their private parts, but instead reserving their, their desires to be exercised with their partner, with their spouse, either for the husband, with the wife, meaning the male uh, Muslim, who, the male who is married to a woman, that they share those things and vice versa the woman who's married to the man and that is the only permissible type of marriage in Islam unlike what is being practiced today in many of uh, around the world and what people have made legitimate which the nations before us did not know the nations before us did not experience this the Jews the people of the book the Christians, the people of the book, the people who came before us, who had the same prophets as us, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, may they all, may Allah be, uh, be pleased with all of them, or may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may peace and blessings be upon all of them, that none of the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, were sent with a message which contained provisions for a man and a man to be married, or a woman and a woman to be married, or to have uh, be partners in any way, shape, or form that had to do with desires and so forth. And Allah speaks about this and against this in the Quran. So that's the Muslim position regarding gay marriage and those kind of other false partnerships which are illegitimate. But going back to the topic at hand, and those people who remember Allah much. So all of them will receive a great reward. And the point of mentioning that for us was that the people who fast, they were mentioned in that verse by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of fasting or being of those who fast is that fasting is a type of expiation. It expiates one's sins and mistakes. And so all of us indeed truly are in need of fasting. And fasting other than the month of Ramadan. But at a minimum, this is an obligation upon every Muslim that is able to do so and fulfill this obligation to fast the holy month of Ramadan. So at least do your best to fast Ramadan in the most perfect manner. You know, striving your best to really fear Allah look at those things that are only permissible avoid looking at those things which are impermissible speaking about those things which are permissible reserving one's tongue and protecting one's tongue from those things which are impermissible touching that which is only permissible and avoiding touching those things which are impermissible so all of those things it requires restraint upon our part as we mentioned uh, uh, southern and If we're able to do that and really benefit, then the idnillah, by the permission of Allah, will have our sins forgiven. فَعَنْ هُذَيْفَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَنَعَنْهُ أَنَّ النَّبِيَ صلى الله عليه وسلم قال فِتْنَةُ الرَّجُلُ فِي أَهْلِهِ وَمَالِهِ وَوَلَدِهِ وَجَارِهِ تُكَفْرَهَا الصلاه والصوم والصدقه والامر والنهي وفي لفظ والامر بمعروف والنهي عن المنكر سو حذيفه بن يمان رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said 
the trial of the man with regards to his family, his wealth, his children, or his neighbor will be expiated, or what ex expiates it is the prayer and um, fasting, charity, and commanding the good and forbidding the evil. And the point of mentioning that here is fasting. That fasting is an expiation for our sins. And fasting also helps us with regards to the mistakes that we make. The sins that we do and the mistakes that we make uh, when it comes to meeting the rights of others. And may Allah forgive us for our many shortcomings. And in another narration, well, Amr bi maruf wa nahi al munkar. So in the other narration, it was mentioned, and this is the narration in uh, in Bukhari, in Bukhari and Muslim, that who they, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, wa amru bi maruf wa nahi munkar, is that commanding the good and forbidding the evil. So all of these things, with regards to this whole, all, all the things we talking, we've been talking about, they all come together. They all come together in that fasting encourages us to be patient, restraining ourselves physically, mentally, and it helps to elevate us spiritually. That is if we gain the benefit of the fast and that it intercedes for us on the day of judgment, that it is, it is a means for gaining forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our many shortcomings and that there is a great reward in the hereafter for fasting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.